Take a deep breath. When we breathe is incredibly important for our health. In a crowded city or the great outdoors, you can't always tell what's in the air you breathe. It's definitely true that some air pollution is invisible. Outside your door and even inside your home, how clean is the air you breathe? We'll get answers from AccuWeather experts who monitor air quality around the world and find out what you can do to protect yourself and your family. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Bill Waddell. What does air quality mean to us? Most people automatically think about smog, pollution, and wildfire smoke. Others worry about allergy season. In today's show, we'll be joined by AccuWeather's own air quality experts will share important information and explain what you need to know about the air outdoors and inside your home. Let's get started. What can make the air around us dangerous? Plume Labs, a new AccuWeather company, provides up-to-the-minute air quality information on the free AccuWeather app. Our Jillian Angeline talked with Plume's co-founder and learned why clean air is so crucial. It's really hard to know what you're breathing, and so this is why uh, we built Plume Labs because the science and the technology exists today to track and monitor what we breathe. Roman Lacombe is the co-founder of Plume Labs. A resident of Paris, France, Lacombe was concerned about the pollution in his city. He could not find the data he needed to get informed. So he took matters into his own hands on a global scale to make the air quality numbers accessible to everyone and help save lives. We're talking about millions of people every year whose lives are cut short because of exposure to pollutants coming from burning wood, fossil fuels. In many places, you may not be able to see all the particles in the air you breathe, but they exist, according to Lacombe. Particulate matter that's uh, emitted by combustion of fossil fuels from internal combustion engines, from cars, from industry, it is there at a background level every single day unless you live in very remote areas. And if you live in a city, you may not be able to escape by just going to the countryside. Uh, stuff that burns in the fields, stuff that you put in the fields to grow, uh, power plants that may be away from the city, they put up a lot of pollution in the air and that pollution doesn't disappear. Bloom takes data from thousands of monitoring stations around the world and has developed an air quality index that's easy to understand at the touch of a few buttons on the AccuWeather app or website. These computers today are able to take all these data points on uh, a scale that's much bigger than what any human could do on their own. In other words, if you know that the wind is blowing from the sea, usually there's going to be less pollution than if it comes from you know the factory on the other side of town. Lacombe says the Plume team uses models to forecast how air quality will change over time. AccuWeather is now helping people access this information. The global audience um, that AccuWeather reaches is in the billion, billion and a half people all around the world, uh, not only in the US and in Europe, but also in parts of the world that have very poor air quality where this information matters the most. He says all of us can find ways to limit our footprint. Bike more, for example, for uh, if it's possible where you live and uh, for closer uh, distances. If you walk, uh, that's um, you know, safe and secure wherever you are. Uh, or if you carpool or switch to maybe electric cars. Lacombe says he hopes Bloom's easy to reach data will help people live healthier lives, one breath at a time. For AccuWeather, I'm Jillian Angeline. Thanks, Jillian. To lead healthier lives, it helps to know more about the pollutants many of us face every day. I asked Laura Kate Bender, the National Assistant Vice President for Healthy Air at the American Lung Association, to break down the top five pollutants. Particle pollution is a really dangerous, really widespread form of outdoor air pollution. Particulate matter comes from wildfire smoke, gas and diesel powered vehicles, and industrial emissions. The smaller they are, the more dangerous, because when we inhale them, the smaller and really tiny particles can go deep into our lungs and sometimes even enter the bloodstream if they're small enough. O3, or ground level ozone, is a main contributor to smog. The ozone that protects us high up in the atmosphere from the sun's UV rays is good, but when it forms near the ground, ground level ozone or ozone air pollution, that's when it ca causes health harm. It's created when emissions from cars and trucks, chemical plants and refineries chemically react with sunlight. And ozone is like a sunburn on the lung because it reacts with lung tissue and it can cause everything from breathing problems to long-term loss of lung function. Exposure to nitrogen dioxide or NO2 can lead to asthma for children. 
Carbon monoxide, or CO, a colorless, odorless gas, can reduce your blood's oxygen levels. Last on the list is sulfur dioxide, or SO2, which can also harm your lungs. Wheezing send people, with, particularly with lung disease, to the ER. But there's even more that we don't know about what happens when you're continually exposed to a whole bunch of them and how they interact with each other. Ozone, particulate matter, and these other dangerous gases are not going away anytime soon. Lincoln Riddle explains what this means and what steps we can take in our day-to-day -day routines to combat the negative effects of air pollution. According to the World Health Organization, poor air quality can lead to the risk of stroke, heart disease, lung cancer, and chronic and acute respiratory diseases. Around the world, more than 80% of people living in urban areas that monitor air pollution are exposed to air quality levels that are higher than what the World Health Organization deems safe. Pollution levels tend to be the highest during the morning and evening rush hour, so avoid being outside, if possible, at these times. That being said, ozone levels tend to be lower in the morning, so it's best to get outdoor exercise in at these times, but you'll want to try and avoid rush hour. Consider walking instead of running, and doing so in parks instead of along busy streets. Some, like those caring for young babies, the elderly, and those with chronic cardiac and lung diseases, should take extra precautions when going out on days with higher ozone concentration. Reporting for AccuWeather, I'm Lincoln Riddle. Coming up, we're heading indoors to learn about the air that's inside our homes. But first, here's what one New Jersey resident had to say about why clean air is important to him. I have cleaner air for my grandchildren. I've got, you know, one is seven months old, and I got two other ones, uh, five and three. I like to see them have cleaner air than we have. For more information on air quality where you live, download the free AccuWeather app or go to AccuWeather.com slash air quality. Welcome back. Environmental experts estimate that we spend 90% of our time indoors. Most of that time is in our home, which means we want the air we're breathing there to be as clean as possible. Sarah Gisrael talked with experts about what you can do to improve the air inside. Good air quality in the home actually begins outside the house. This is something that we can't easily change. We'd have to move house and not everybody has this option. What's outside eventually comes in. Constantly in a moderate level of pollution, this can be bad. After a year, you can start seeing the health impacts of that poor air quality. And some of those are short-term health problems like uh, allergies, uh, reactions, respiratory issues, uh, colds. Experts say there are three components to improving your indoor air. The first is reduce sources of pollution. If you're cooking or cleaning or painting using chemicals, um, any kind of heating that involves combustion like a wood stove, open the windows, turn on your fan extractor when you're cooking. This also includes using renewable energy in the home when possible and staying away from anything, including air fresheners or plastic furniture that give off a chemical smell. The plastic is actually emitting volatile organic compounds, a type of gas, especially when it's in the sun. And so what you can do is you can leave this furniture out on the balcony or outside for a little while and let it off gas outside. The next method is to improve home ventilation. It's as simple as opening a window. On one side of the house blowing in and on one side of the house blowing out can do a remarkable thing in terms of bringing in fresh air removing pollutants from the house. The final factor is filtration. Make sure air filters are regularly replaced and monitored. The oh. ones that are out there that are good now are yeah. radon monitors, carbon monoxide monitors, those are good. Yeah monitors for indoor PM and some other pollutants are getting there. Checking your home for any excess moisture that could lead to mold will also improve your air. For AccuWeather, I'm Sarah Gisrael. The annual State of the Air report is out from the American Lung Association. Coming up, we'll show you the cities with the best air quality, the regions with the worst air pollution, and how wildfire smoke is affecting more Americans. Stay with us. Combining with the, the, the usual summer ozone pollution, which occurs when it's hot out, it's sort of a toxic soup atmosphere type conditions in cities from Denver to Salt Lake City to Sacramento, and then even up into, into parts of British Columbia.
The American Lung Association has released their annual State of the Air report, which says 41% of Americans breathe unhealthy air. That report summarizes data from the last three years and details which regions are facing the greatest risks from air pollution. Sarah Gisrael has more on which areas top the association's list for the best air in the U.S. and which city has been named the most polluted for the 22nd year in a row. We are the air we breathe. Air pollution and lung health go hand in hand. With fewer residents and less concentrated populations, East Coast cities top the list for best air quality. Bangor, Maine and Burlington, Vermont, Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, these cities uh, enjoy um, the benefits of wind. That wind helps circulate pollutants like car emissions and particulate matter, the pollutant that comes from wildfires. All of that smoke is going to remain in place close to the source. But once you start increasing the wind, you then start to move that smoke out. It mixes through through the air and you lower the concentration. Poor air quality can cause serious damage over time. The report says that 9 million more people were exposed to unhealthy air across the country between 2018 to 2020 compared to previous years. Coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath and healthy people, people with asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and other chronic diseases you can have in the hospital even for those that are healthy, you know, that can start to become an issue, especially over multiple different, you know, over several days in a row, people will start to feel sluggish. While some East Coast cities like New York and Washington, D.C. struggled with air pollution, the West Coast saw the most unhealthy air. Los Angeles tops our list for most polluted cities, again, as has 22 out of the 23 years we've done the report. Bakersfield, California is second on the list. Uh, Fresno is third. So we still see California dominating the most polluted cities for ozone list. Drought conditions, population and gas and oil extractions in the state are also contributing factors. Unfortunately, due to the number of people that live there, the unique geography and topography of California, we continue to see way too many days of people breathing uh, unhealthy air. Billings said the biggest change in air quality over recent years has been an increase in wildfires. We're seeing it in the wildfires, the drought and, and dry conditions that lead to the formation of wildfires. We see in the ozone formation, you need hot, uh, sunny days to create the conditions to form ozone or smog. Particulate matter can take a while to leave the air. They tend to last in the air for a longer period of time, so they can be carry it a significant distance downwind from where the fire originates. Getting these polluters under control means saving lives. We found that we can prevent 110,000 premature deaths over the next 30 years if we can clean up uh, transportation and electricity that powers them. But one voice isn't enough, Billing says, if you want to protect future generations. We can all choose our next car purchase to be an electric car. We can choose to take transit. We can choose to walk or bike rather than drive our car. Healthier air, more time with 110,000 lives. What we do now sets the stage for lung health for decades to come. Unless we can combat climate change, uh, we will continue to face this challenge in the air that we breathe. For AccuWeather, I'm Sarah Gisrael. For many people in the country not impacted by wildfire smoke or urban smog, their biggest air quality concern may be seasonal allergies. Climate change and air pollution linked to warming contribute to longer and more severe allergy seasons in many parts of the nation. I recently spoke with allergy experts who say rising temperatures and air pollution have led to growing seasons that start earlier and last longer, affecting seasonal allergy symptoms for 50 million Americans. We are looking at this to be one of the more intense years just from tree pollen, grass, and even the weed pollen. AccuWeather senior meteorologist Alan Reppert says the spring allergy forecast shows moderate temperatures and a lot of rain, leading to high tree pollen levels in the southeast and the northwest this spring. Grass pollen levels will peak in the weeks that follow. As we go to the fall, that's when we start to really see the weed pollen take over and uh, really have the weed pollen last until it either freezes in the north or we start to see the sun dipping farther and farther south in the horizon. Allen says weed pollen will thrive thanks to warm weather in the southwest and tropical rainfall in the southeast. And the season's going to be longer. Um, the season's going to start earlier, so people are going to suffer 
from symptoms for a longer period of time. Fiona Lowe at University of Washington and researchers with Climate Central say climate change is a major factor. Records from 1970 show spring-like weather is arriving sooner and getting warmer. The growing season is also lasting longer. The frost will kill the flowers and the plant, and that's the end of the season. So if we have warmer nighttime temperatures, the frost date will be delayed, and so you'll have a longer season that way too. So if you feel like your allergies are getting worse, uh, they probably are because of climate change and, and the more intense allergy seasons that we're having. Kenneth Mendez, the president and CEO of the Allergy and Asthma Foundation of America, says Scranton, Pennsylvania, Wichita, Kansas, and McAllen, Texas, top the list for cities with the worst allergies. Increased ground level ozone and air pollution are making matters worse, especially in urban heat islands. Carbon dioxide fuels the more intense release. Um, that's actually a stimulant or, or helps plants grow and release more pollen. There's a direct link between climate and your health and you're feeling it through your allergies. Our team has your back to stay one step ahead of seasonal allergies. We have a weekly outlook for tree pollen, ragweed, mold, and grass pollen in your neighborhood for free right on the AccuWeather app. All of these pollutants and particles in the air could also be impacting the way storms form in some parts of the country. More on that and the easy ways you can check air quality in your neighborhood when we return. I think people are becoming more aware uh, and hopefully that will be kind of another piece in the puzzle in terms of us being willing to take some action on climate change. Welcome back to our special presentation, The Air We Breathe. Air pollution isn't just bad for your health. Monica Danielle has a closer look at groundbreaking research happening right now along the Gulf Coast. Small pop-up storms can quickly cause big problems in Houston. Typical afternoon thunderstorms that you can get on the 20, 30, 40 percent chances in the summertime. Um, some of these can be a little stronger than what maybe was, was predicted. Is pollution from cars and refineries making those storms more intense? What role do these fine particles play in the, in the life cycle of these thunderstorms? Does man-made particles uh, impact the storms differently than natural particles? Uh, and under what conditions can this occur? Atmospheric scientists from University of Houston, the Department of Energy, and other groups are using high-tech equipment and artificial intelligence in the Tracking Aerosol Convection Interactions Experiment. Southeast Texas is one of the top spots in the nation where man-made pollution suspended in the atmosphere interacts with natural aerosols like sea spray and dust. In order for the cloud to form in the first place, it has to have a, a particle for the water to condense on. Uh, and so that's where the aerosol component of this project comes in. This team of researchers is using radar, drones, high-tech sensors, and more than 1,000 weather balloon launches in the study to better understand how air pollution, wind patterns, and sea breeze could lead to bigger storms with more rain. Determine whether or not we can improve the forecast for some of these storms, particularly these, these pop-up thunderstorms uh, in the summertime. Researchers say they could be reviewing data for a decade to help get clear answers about any connections between air pollution and storms. For AccuWeather, I'm Monica Danielle. Thanks, Monica. We've made it easy to use all of this information to check the air quality anywhere you are and keep your family healthy and safe. Open the AccuWeather app on your smartphone or tablet. Scroll down to current air quality and you'll find the current index and the full breakdown for each pollutant. We have even more tools on AccuWeather.com. Our interactive air quality map shows you current air quality levels across the world and around the country. You can zoom in, down to your state, even to your neighborhood. Helping you plan ahead with a 24-hour air quality forecast and a daily forecast. To track air quality everywhere you go, just download the AccuWeather app. To plan ahead, visit AccuWeather.com slash air quality. I'm Bill Waddell. Thanks for joining us.